Okay, this video is chronic stress increases cancer metastasis by netosis. So I've given previous lectures on netosis, netosis, which just means when these neutrophil cells sort of spill their guts out into the extracellular space. And chronic stress increases this happening. There's other things that increase it happening, and I'm going to talk about those. Things like a high-fat diet also will do that. I'll, I've explained that in previous lectures, but I'm going to go over it now. There's a new paper uh, and a new lady I want to introduce you to who uh, did the research on this. So this is netosis. Netosis means neutrophil extracellular trap. It comes from a white blood cell, part of your immune system, defense system, the innate uh, defense system. Um, so it's a neutrophil, extracellular. It releases its DNA, throws it out like a fisherman's net into the extracellular space. You can also say that it um, spills its guts. It opens up its plasma membrane and tosses its DNA out like a fisherman's net, you know, or spills its guts like Seneca, the, you know, the, the Roman senator from thousands of years ago in ancient Rome. Okay. And there's a reason why it does this. Now, here's a lady, really brilliant lady, who figured this out. Her name is Makala Eggblad. She's Egg, Eggblad. She's like the last name on the list of researchers that worked on this, okay? Um, she works at Cold Springs Harbor, which is known for having a lot of the top scientists, okay? So, let me get myself out of the way here. Chronic stress is associated with increased risk of metastasis. That means cancer spread. There's a primary tumor where the cancer starts, and then metastasis is when it spreads somewhere else. Most of the time when a patient dies from cancer, it's because of the metastasis went somewhere else. Went to the lungs, destroyed their lung function. Went to the brain, destroyed their brain. Went to the liver, destroyed their liver. Those are the three main ways, you know, three of the main ways that cancer will kill a patient. What was unique about it was the chronic stress, like psychological stress, would cause increased neutrophils in the blood and increased amount of the neutrophils undergoing netosis. And then what was happening is the neutrophils were suppressing the T cell response. So neutrophils are part of the innate immune system. They're the first responders. They're located in the blood typically. The adaptive immune system is like part two of the immune system is more lymphocytes. And they form a more specific response to removing cancer from the blood. And the mechanism by which the neutrophils were suppressing the ability of the body to fight the cancer was largely through what are called these, these nets, netosis, extracellular traps, okay? And it was the elevated cortisol in the blood is, that would appear to be the main thing activating the netosis and making things uh, favor the cancer over the patient's health, okay? Glucocorticoids released during chronic stress cause net formation, and this establishes a metastasis-promoting tumor microenvironment. Okay, that's the conclusion of the paper there in the abstract. Here's a graphical abstract summarizing the paper from the paper here. So, so what happens is chronic psychological stress causes increased release of stress hormones. Stress hormones are catecholamines like adrenaline, noradrenaline, and also cortisol. Okay, and they list them here as GC. They're called glucocorticoids. Gluco because they increase blood glucose. Corticoid because they're, you know, like cortisol. And they also increase some fluid retention in the body. All right, but the point is they cause increased neutrophils in the blood, neutrophilia, elevated neutrophils in the blood, and they also cause these neutrophils to behave abnormally to more often undergo netosis. There's other things that predispose neutrophils to undergoing netosis. Um, so excess psychological stress, like we just talked about, but also when a person's are older, the neutrophils are more prone to this netosis effect. Um, if you eat a high-fat meal, you'll get more netosis from your neutrophils. Um, if you take corticosteroid medications, and a lot of cancer patients are put on corticosteroid medications, and this author, Makala, she says, There's, that's probably not a good idea because it's going to increase netosis and more vulnerability to, to metastasis. The glucocorticoids cause immune suppression on the lymphocytes that normally are the body uses to remove these cancer cells. Also, having leaky gut increases netosis. And the mechanism of that is when you have leaky gut, you get the bacterial endotoxins in, they activate the neutrophils, and they undergo netosis. So all of these things, you know, a typical cancer patient uh, is doing a lot of bad things. They're stressed out. They eat high-fat meals. They've got leaky gut. They're older patients. And they're often on glucocorticoids, or they just have elevated glucocorticoids because they're stressed out. 
One of the consequences of the elevated glucocorticoids in the netosis is it causes a type of activation of what are called fibroblast cells, these little spindle-shaped cells, and they release more of something called fibronectin. There's also other enzymes released by neutrophils, including, you know, neutrophil elastase. And then this leads to an increased amount of something called meta matrix metalloproteinases. All of these things open up the matrix of extracellular space and facilitate cancer cells spreading to other locations and growing and killing the patient. So if you don't want your, if you know somebody, a friend or a family member with cancer, you don't want to stress them out for no reason. That's bad for them. Okay, they should be eating a low-fat vegan diet. That's also better for them. They should be walking a lot to get their lymphatic fluid flowing to, so the white blood cells can travel around the body faster and surveil it. Um, so, you know, people who are religious are healthier. They live longer. And in part, that's because it re reduces their stress. Uh, all the major religions, the, the patients are healthier. Okay, so it's also good for the cancer patient to have a good social support system. Okay, just some more stuff from the article talking about how it was a neutrophil-mediated mechanism. Neutrophil goes into cells. Well, the glucocorticoids bind to a glucocorticoid receptor, and then they travel to the nucleus, and they affect gene expression. You know, so they can make it more pro-inflammatory or less inflammatory. They make it, glucocorticoids in the acute phase are anti-inflammatory, but in the chronic phase, they, they start doing things that are rather bad, as we talked about here, and promoting a cancer spread environment. Okay, normally, like I said, they'll have some anti-inflammatory effects. We're not going to get into that uh, too much in this talk. And when you have an elevated neutrophil to lymphocyte ratio, NLR, like it normally should be, let's say, less than 3 or 3.5. Uh, when it gets more than that, that's a poor prognostic sign in these cancer patients. And it's for a couple of reasons that neutrophils go up. You're releasing more from the bone marrow. You're demarginating them off the walls of endothelial cells. You're preventing them from going subendothelial by diapedesis. All these things are going to increase the amount of neutrophils in the blood. Normally, neutrophils are 65% of your white blood cells. Okay. Uh, let's see. What else do they talk about? There's different ways they cause stress in the animal. I'll have the same diagram on the next page where I can show it to you in more detail. But the bottom line was all the stressed out. Uh, mice, their cancer grew faster. So let me show it to you in a, a better slide here, the next one. Okay, so here's the same slide magnified. And what you can see here is that, I'll, I'll use the pointer to explain it a little more. This mouse was put under stress by physical restraint. They put it into a big test tube and it really couldn't move around much and the mouse doesn't like that, so they're stressed out. Their cancer grows faster, okay? And this one, they gave the mouse some form of chronic unpredictable stress. Uh, unpredictable mild stress. The cancer grows faster. The red dots are higher than the control animal. Same thing, here's the control animal versus the stressed animal. The red dot is higher than the unstressed. Okay? And this one, they wanted to see if it was just the corticosteroids alone. So they just put a corticosteroid uh, uh, pellet into the mouse. So in a mouse, you'll call it corticosterone. In a human, you'd call it uh, cortisol. It's the equivalent hormone. All right. And you can see you get more tumors growing bigger, faster, more rapidly. So same thing again, placebo versus corticosteroid pellet, cancer grows faster, more extensively. Yeah, and if you had just asked me, I would say, oh yeah, cortisol immunosuppresses, you need your immune system to remove the cancer cells, so you would expect the cancer to grow faster. But what was especially unique in this paper was they had identified netosis as a critical factor for the mechanism. Because when they did things to prevent netosis, like use a DNAase enzyme to digest the DNA, you get less cancer, okay? When they block the glucocorticoid, you get less cancer, okay? If you remove the neutrophils, you get less cancer. So they tested it a whole bunch of ways to confirm that is what was causing it, okay? And they also talked about, you know, downstream mechanism of increased fibroblast production of fibronectin, which produces adhesion that can facilitate a cancer cell. You know, adhesion to the, when it spreads to a new location, it has to adhere to the new place, stick to it, and get into that tissue and then grow. Um, and it seemed that the neutrophil and the nets were increasing the likelihood of that happening. Okay, so what was kind of interesting things that she said was that uh, stress reduction should be part of the treatment for all cancer patients. Um, she also was concerned that glucocorticoids were the hormone elevated in stress, cortisol in humans, corticosterone in mice, was 
increasing the cancer growth and spread. So she's basically saying they should be careful about giving glucocorticoids to cancer patients unless there's no other option uh, because that might make the cancer grow faster. Sometimes they'll give them because there's brain edema swelling. They're afraid the brain's going to herniate and kill the patient, so then you have an acute reason why it, it could be reasonable in that context. This is just a repeat of the slide earlier, the graphical abstract showing things that increase netosis, increase cancer metastasis, spread, and kill the patient faster. So that's not good. So you don't want to be stressed out, number one. Number two, you don't want to be eating high-fat meals because that also causes the problem. Leaky gut also causes netosis. Okay, Glucocorticoid medications, you want to avoid them if you can't. So do things to reduce your stress. And I know my mom totally outlived her cancer prognosis. They were expecting her to only live two to three years. She lived about 10, 11. She did things like she went on a religious pilgrimage at Medjugorje. That seemed to help her. She was on the board of directors of an orphanage. That made her real happy and helped her. She liked playing tennis. That seemed to help her a lot. Uh, she adopted some kids. You know, They were a little bit older kids. They were really sort of children of patients and a uh, children of a friend when the families were having problems they would just be adopted and live at our house and she liked having the kids there they loved her um so i don't know and she just had a very cheerful positive friendly demeanor my mom did and that i think made her live longer you know i'm the one who screwed up it was many many years ago it was like 30 years ago i was young i didn't know any better i just said you go to the specialist at that time i didn't realize i could read all the books about cancer and know a lot of stuff they didn't know i wish i had known all this back then i probably could have kept her alive a lot longer but anyways this is useful stuff this is a mechanism by which chronic psychological stress increases cancer both we know that it suppresses the immune system like the t-cell lymphocytes natural nk cells that remove cancer cells but we also know it's because of this neutrophil effect and that's relevant because we know things we can do to reduce the neutrophil effect prevent leaky gut prevent, and don't eat high fat meals so anyways i hope that was helpful